Hey everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Get Seen, Be Heard. Um, we are in for a really, really special treat. Um, we have with us uh, my friend Tammy Leader Fuller, who has been in the television industry for 35 years. I'm going to let her share her resume with you, but um, with the Today Show and all kinds of other shows. So we're going to find out how to get on television. So welcome, Tammy. Hi, how are you? It's nice to see you. It's so good to have you here. So tell everybody about you. Give us your resume because it's so impressive. Well, I'm actually not in the television business anymore. I left TV two years ago. I run empowerment camps for women now. Uh, it's called Camp Empowerment, and I have taken all of the experts that I have pulled together in all my years of TV, the smartest women I know, and brought them together to actually help women get happy again. But in, so in 1980, I graduated college and I was in Miami. It was during the real time Miami Vice days. So I started at a local ABC station there uh, as an intern and a research assistant, literally chasing Colombian drug lords and dealing with corrupt cops who were stealing cocaine and money from dead people that they were going to cover as a homicide. And so I really cut my teeth with some brilliant people. If I, could, if I had one wish in my life, it would be that I could go back and do that now with the knowledge I have because I didn't know anything. My job was to carry red Marlboro cigarettes and a brush and water for my people, for my eye team. But uh, so I spent a lot of years in investigative producing. I did a lot of um, local corruption stuff. There's corruption everywhere. And it was in the old days when you could really go out and fight for the people. It's a whole different ball game now, uh, as you know. But so I spent 20 something years in local news, a little less actually. And then I went and worked at the Today Show uh, out of our Miami bureau. Um, I covered Central America when people cared about places like Nicaragua and Iran-Contra and Panama and all that. I was on a plane every week to every place that you probably haven't heard of in 30 years from Tegucigalpa, Honduras, to Panama, to chasing the Sandinistas in Nicaragua, to hanging out with, um, you know, rebels mostly, and did a lot of stuff when, during the Reagan administration, when people really, Central America was really a big, big place. So I covered news for a long time, and, and then I left in 1992 to go work at the Today Show. Um, I, Katie Kirk and I had worked together in Miami for years, and so she brought me in, and I started doing a lot of stuff with her, and uh, covered everything from health and wellness to family. Uh, I was a, a mom at the time when a lot of people weren't. And so I got to really do, I did seven series on infertility when nobody really knew and understood what infertility was about. I did a lot of medical stuff, did a lot of, of you know crime and punishment, and then went to America's Most Wanted that was started by one of my photographer guys that I had worked with years before. Did that for a few years. Probably the most profound thing I ever did in my whole life was a story there that actually was cited yesterday um, when they discovered Adam Walsh's killer yesterday. They identified uh, him. And uh, I happened to be in Orlando doing a story uh, for the Today Show and saw a local news story um, and called America's Most Wanted and said, we should do this story. This is a woman that was missing from a Walmart parking lot. Did the story Friday, put the story on the air Saturday. They caught the guy Sunday, and he's on death row. So of all the stuff I've done, that's probably my most profound. And then in 2005, I wrote a book with five other women and, and kept my P – I had a, a freelance business going for a long time, mostly working with the Today Show. And in 2009, I left to come start a, um, a new show here at Warner Brothers in L.A. that um, – wasn't exactly what I signed up for. I got Hollywooded a little bit, but worked for Extra TV for I was a senior supervising producer at the entertainment show Extra. So that's my long resume. And now I'm a, t a camp director trying to help people get happy again using the connections that I had made in all my years in television. That's Which awesome. I love. Oh my God. Isn't she amazing? Yeah, yeah. That is a heck of a resume. Sorry, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I kind of bounced all over, but essentially I've covered news forever. I've covered news forever, and also news has turned. You know, we in the 7 o'clock hour of the Today Show, we never, ever, ever would put a Justin Bieber story in. It was all about news. It was with Bryant, Gumbel, and Katie, and we were. it was all about live, live, live news stuff. And now news is a whole different ball game, you know. And the business really changed in 2001, uh, 2011, right? Or no, 2001, right after 9-11 when news budgets started to get cut. And in the old days, we as TV producers were never allowed to take handout videos, stuff that was actually uh, 
sent to us by publicists or by people who were marketing people for a certain company. And in 2001, budgets changed and news budgets really got slashed. And so there was a whole different take. And all of a sudden, we were allowed to start taking handout video, as they call it. And I started a production company that was what we call a B-roll company for that very reason, as I was hired by um, resort, mostly in the travel industry, resorts and spas and and um, places to go that were looking to create video resumes. Video started to really get big, and you know, 15 years ago, and uh, it was before people had websites. But I would go and I would create. I would work with uh, with these PR directors, mostly from the hotels, and say, "Okay, what do you have here? What can we create visually that you're going to continue to do?" And we would shoot it, and then they would distribute it. And it would be almost like a video brochure, but you know, at that point, nobody was nobody was taking handout video anymore of people on on a cruise ship clinking wine glasses, going, you know, l'chaim. You know what I mean? They were literally you had to create action and excitement. So the very first one I did was for a a hotel in Jamaica who was really excited because they just had a they just uh, opened a water theme park with like a lazy river, which, as we all know does not make news. And so I went down there and I, they said, what can we do here? What can we do to get some attention to our beautiful water theme park in Montego Bay? So I went down there and knocked on doors and found the, used my investigative skills and found the Jamaican bobsled team from the Calgary Olympics in 1996, found them, brought them, put their sled on the back of our taxi, hauled it from Kingston, Jamaica to Montego Bay and set up and, you know, they came with their medals and we did an Olympic day there and we created, so these Olympic gold medalists came up and they were, they were on the water slide with the, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Cool Runnings that was made after, you know, was made after this, their story. And they got up at the top of the slides and they took these rafts and they, they put the kids on it and went one, two, three, and sort of sent them down the way they did the bobsleds. And we shot it and brought an Olympic band there and created a complete spectacle that gave them incredible video, raw video, not edited together, that they then pushed out and they got what they called $2 million worth of, of coverage, editorial coverage. And you know, it was $2 million in comparative ad value. So if you were to have bought, if Wyndham Hotels was to have bought ad space on these national shows that they got on, it would have been over $2 million. So we sort of started something that created exciting, interesting angles to things and then visually documented them ourselves and then sent them away, not edited, not with music, not with bells and whistles, but in raw form with a complete outline as to what they could see and then they could use it and edit it in and give them the power and the control. And it, it's thus started a really big change in the television industry and how you know now producers will take handout if it's legit, if it's well shot, and if it doesn't look like handout PR video. Does that make sense? It you know it what? does, and that that's oh gosh. great to know. And, um, and, and I, Christina talks a lot about you know finding ways to make yourself newsworthy. So that's exactly what you did. You took this Montego Bay resort who needed an a you know, an angle, and you found a way to make them newsworthy. Um, really, I mean, I'm sure that it wasn't for free, but in, in reality, it was for free, right? You didn't hire, you know, you didn't hire huge, like you didn't edit the video, you know, today, and I don't want to oversimplify this, because I'm sure that it was a ton of work, but today, you know, that can almost be done with your iPhone, you know, I mean, you want good video, of course, but, but I love that you found an angle and made, made this, found a way to make this newsworthy. Like that's exactly right. what we talk about on the show. That was just the beginning of this B-roll business. And even though I worked for the Today Show, I was a free, a permanent, they called me a permalancer, a permanent freelancer. They would, because I had shot it and because they knew that it was shot with a, a, a news person's eye, it wasn't so promotional. I didn't have signs in the background showing the name of the hotel. Like I really was, was clear about making it not look so promo They won't use that. If you try to, I know you want to get your logo in, but if you try to make it look too commercial, it's never getting used. It has to look like they shot it. So my number one tip for anybody who's shooting video or trying to get video on is don't make it look yeah, you can slip in it. They can be wearing a t-shirt or you can slip in something. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, the more promo it looks, the more, the more scrutiny it's going to get on the other side. The producers have a lot of power and control. Part of the problem too, especially with TV is 
you know, these, these producers make you feel like, you know, you have to chase them down and kiss their ass in order to even get, take a phone call. And, you know, they need your content as much as you want your people to get on. So there's a whole game here, an elusive game that, that, that the power players play and it's not really legit. You know, when, as a producer for years, I had a couple of really good, only two or three really good PR people that I trusted who when I was in a bind and I was stuck and I called, I was doing shows all day and I would call them at 10 o'clock at night and say, okay, I need the mother of a child with eating disorders who is being bullied. And I could call my people and they, even though it may not have been their clients, they saved my butts. And when they say, I, you know, when they did that repeatedly, when they had something that might not really be newsworthy, I kind of found a way in a Mother's Day gift guide or something to help promote them and plug their people because it's a give and take and it's all about relationships. And I, I, I really, if you've been on a show or you've done something with somebody and you have a relationship with them and they don't think you're trying to, you know, take advantage or really overly plug, that's, that's where the, the, they'll call you and say, hey, I'm doing this, and do you have a client that, that could cover that? And that's how it works. I got a call today from somebody who was a camper at my camp who called me and said, I'm, she's a freelance writer, so I'm writing for, should I, something fell in my lap last night for Fortune Magazine. I love Camp Powerman. I had a great time. You know, she was just a customer. And she said, and they wanted to do luxury camps. And do you have anything like that? And it just turns out we just signed a deal with Fairmont Hotel. So we're doing Camp Powerman in a luxury style. I'm going to get in her Fortune Magazine story. Why? Because she's a friend and she believes in my product because she lived my product for three days. It changed her life. And she came back and said, how can I help you grow this? And I said to her, if a story ever crosses your desk that has an ankle or something, call me. And that's what happened. I built my trust with her first. And then she, I was the first person she called, and lo and behold, we're getting in Fortune magazine. Fabulous. And I tell the story, I have two versions of that, too. That's how I got on Dr. Oz. I had met a producer through LinkedIn, and she realized, you know, they, they check you out. Like, the Dr. Oz show checks out your Facebook and makes sure you're a legit person. And um, a couple times, she's like, Christina, you seem really connected. I need, same kind of thing. I need somebody who has parents who have dementia, whatever, and boom, you know, I knew exactly who it was, and I booked all these people for her, and then something came up for me, and you're exactly right. She called me and said, hey, do you want to be on the show? Can you be here on Tuesday? Yeah. And my local Fox, I think I've booked 10 shows for her, and when she was doing, she got offered a syndicated special about all about an entrepreneur taking an idea from napkin to marketplace, a 30 minute television show. And she used me through the wow. whole thing. But do you see what happened? You, and you went to her, not like, I'm not going to do that for you. That's not my client. If, yeah. you had, nope. if you had been a typical PR person, it never would have happened. But because you got, you gained her trust and you pulled through for her in five minutes, you stopped what you were doing. That's the key. If you ever get a call from somebody who you've ever worked with, who says, Hey, hey I'm desperate or an email from somebody who says, um, this is what I'm looking for. Do not, even if you're on the phone trying to help them, do not wait because it's all about first come first serve. So write them back and say on it right now, putting my day aside to help you find this, let them know you're working for them. You know, TV producers, especially today don't have the support that we had. I had tiers of people under me who could do research. You know, when I started, we didn't have the internet, you know, we couldn't just Google, you know, parents of kids with autism. You know what I mean? You can't do that. And I mean, we didn't, we had to really go find it and get on a real phone, you know, and if we were out shooting, they couldn't call us and you know so it was a whole interesting way of collecting today's a whole different ball game but and there are so many more choices I mean when I started we had three channels we didn't even have Fox we had you only had three options and they had a 22 minute news show at 6 p.m. every night and that was it that, whoever is then seeking info on that specific thing that you're good at um, that's that's what you should that I, I believe that that's what you should you know own that space because once you own it it's yours Right. Okay. We have a little issue. Hang on one second. Record. All right, guys, we had some technical issues. We lost Karen. Um, and Tammy's time is really valuable. I'm just going to ask her a couple questions and she's just given us some amazing ideas about being newsworthy, which I talk about all the time. Um, but Tammy, what would be, you know, you said that the, everything's changed. The television industry's changed so much. And you've talked about, you know, sending raw footage, but how, how do you recommend like building this relationship with a producer, you know, getting started, getting your feet wet. And, and we talked about locals. So let's talk about that briefly. And then once you've gotten 
locally your feet wet, how do you go national? You know, it's really all about relationships. It's very hard to get in unless um, it's really all about who you know. You need to show up to events. You need to network. You need to go and be in places where they gather, basically. You know, even if it's red carpety kinds of things, even if you need to just go and hover and hang out and meet people and snoop and be of assistance to them. They are, at the end of the day, producers are just a bunch of, of uh, overworked, you know, non-supported people who have deadlines to make and who need assistance because we, we as producers make stuff up every day from a blank piece of paper. And so if you can really build personal relationships with some of these people, go to, if you're a PR person, there's a, there are Facebook groups, there are uh, networking events, there are some, there's one called Media Czars. Do you know what that is? I don't. There's a, Facebook group, there's a Facebook group, um, it's a closed group, but it, they, they call it, um, uh, it's a group for publicists who like other publicists, because a lot of, um, a lot of publicists don't like each other, they're very backbiting, um, but I would recommend, you know, networking with other people who do what you do, because when they have an opportunity that crosses their desk, and it doesn't work for them, they'll fill it with you. You know, they'll, they'll call you and say, hey, you got anybody for this. That's really the most important thing. Oh, hi, Karen, you're back. All right, Karen, we're, we're just wrapping up. So we're recording, and we just asked Tim a couple questions because she's got to go. So she's giving some final tips on how you get connected to producers. Okay. So I really do think, I think that, I think the first start is to, it's easier to connect with other publicists and PR people who you've met and seen when you're out on the scene and doing things. Um, so I would start there because that's where they're the ones who have the relationships with the producers. And if they can save you know, the day for those producers, then they, they already have their cell phone numbers. And so when they, and then they'll get a, an email or a call that says, Hey, I'm looking for this and this and this, the way to really build a relationship with the producer is to save their butts when it has nothing to do with you or your client. If you can do that, like you did, Christina, with Dr. Oz, one day, they'll hold it in the back of your, your head. It really is a tit-for-tat business. If you, and don't ever, ever assume that any producer ever owes you anything. You need to really be respectful of if you, piss, if, if you get mad because they pick somebody over you because they like, even though you have the same product, uh, if you say to them, what happened? Why didn't you, you know, call me? They're not going to ever call you again. There's a power BS thing that goes on, especially with producers. It's, they, you know, they have control of something that's very valuable. It's called air, and you know, and once and once you can control what goes on air, it really uh, it, it gives them a false sense. But they uh, many many times they have you know I know in the entertainment shows you know. Uh, I was called, you know, we, I ran uh, the weekend stuff. And so, you know, these, these um, celebrities who overdose and do really stupid things, they don't do it on Wednesdays. They only do it on the weekends. And so I was always in charge. And every Sunday morning, I'd get a call that, oh, Heath Ledger overdosed or Paul Walker got into a car crash and he's dead. And, you know, and, and, you know, I, I would have to go, sorry. I said, then you need experts, right? To talk about it. I need people who knew him and I need people who could tell stories about him. So then I got on the phone and I would call people I knew. You worked with this one. You worked with them on this movie. What's the craziest thing? You know, most of the time they don't want to talk, but they can send you to somebody else. And so at the end of the day, it's oh, it's about figuring out how to get very quickly someone who can help give you a great story. And if you happen to be on that list that gets those calls or those emails, and that's what you need to do when you need a producer, you need to say, look, I represent XYZ, but I know everybody in this town I've lived here 30 years and if you need anything like call me you know if you want to know if this story is true if there's a kid who was killed in an explosion in a biology lab in the school call me my kids are, you know are high schoolers they know people in every school a lot of these producers in these markets are transient and they don't have connections to the community and that's a really good way is to use your community ties and connections to help them with stories that have nothing to do with your clients because once you bail them they will remember you unless they're not good people but most of them really are most of them really have really long memories they remember wow you're the one who saved my butt on this and this and this and i'm, I'm on a lot of of emails with some reporters who are always looking for, I have a girl from the Chicago Tribune who, who sends out three times a week, I'm looking for XYZ, they can't live in Illinois, 
um, because she, I guess, something with the tribute. They have to be national, but this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone who has a vitamin D deficiency that never go, you know, that's in the sun all the time. I'm looking for someone who, you know, is working with their husband. I'm looking for whatever it is, and I check it. You know, if there's somebody I know, I always connect her. I when I get her emails, I always read them. And should I ever need her, I've kind of I've saved her three or four times. I've gotten her what she needs, and she's used them. And I know when the time is right, when I need something, I'm not going to call her to go write about empowerment on an, any normal day but if I have a story like my story right now is I have my mom and my sister and I were and my daughter and I were three generations of women working to help women get happy so I'm now this week I'm pitching that story I pitch I mean I have a friend at the Daily Mail it doesn't belong on the Daily Mail but he's my friend he loves the story thinks it's a warm fuzzy Mother's Day story will it get on I don't know but right now it's being scrutinized you know what I mean they're really looking at it is it is it a story that's a real fit for that no but it's a it's a warm fuzzy and it, it could work so it's all because Sean wants to help me and he's my friend and I've helped him a lot so that's kind of the way it works but as I said save your pitches for something with a really good angle and you know when there's a generic Mother's Day is coming they're looking at gift guides that's an easy no-brainer but you know any of these holidays you know find a niche because they've got to do the stories anyway you know when I was I was working out a, a friend who was a publicist at ancestry.com and when the Olympics came last time, I, he, we talked about it. And he's like, how do I do this? I go, why don't you go find Ryan Lochte's, you know, go look him up. Go find his, his, that's what you do. Go find his people. Go find out where some of these people are from. It turned out Ryan Lochte's family grew up in the same block where he was swimming in England, like in, at the Olympics in London. They literally, oh, his yeah. family, his ancestors, oh, yeah. they would never have known that. And we did a whole thing with them about Ryan Lochte's, you know, background. And he didn't even know about it. And then they approached him. And I had somebody at NBC do a thing with him. Did you know that your family, and they showed him the family tree. That guy freaked out. No idea. So it was like, it's about getting creative, you know, um, and really thinking about things out of the box and doing the work. The reporters are work, overworked. If you do the work for them and it's a shake your head like, wow, I didn't know that, you know, it, chances are you'll get on. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Thank you so much, Tammy. The information amazing, amazing. And people are going to get so much out of it. So thank you for joining us and um, we'll see you guys next week. You're welcome. You and I are going to do thank something you. real specific one day. We're going to do this. We're going to drill this down for people who really, really want to know and learn how to under, how to do it. Um, and you and I are going to do that one day. So stay tuned guys. Cause it's really, it's a, it's a formulaic thing that really works. All right. Cool. Love it. Great. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much, Tammy. Bye. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.